Um, one of the first reactions, uh, non-political, I guess, reactions to the departure of Jacinda Ardern and one of the first pieces of advice, of advice tendered to the Prime Minister-designate, Chris Hipkins, or in fact, I think it was tendered to whoever was going to take over at that stage, was that our immigration settings to solve the problem of unemployment in certain sectors was the biggest priority, immediate, now priority, for an incoming Prime Minister. That plea was made by the Head of Business New Zealand, the country's largest business lobby uh, and uh, advocacy organisation. It's Head Kirk Hope, who joins us uh, on the line now. Kirk, uh, well, Happy New Year. It's already well underway, certainly politically by the looks of it. Um, were you guys surprised by the change of leadership? Uh, look, I mean, I think everyone was in some ways surprised and in other ways uh, unsurprised. Uh, but, but you know, to start a year like this, yeah, yeah it was pretty, uh, it was was a bit of a surprise. I mean, obviously what, what we said around the immigration stuff was um, something which has been a problem for business for quite some time and, and certainly we've talked about it previously about businesses being able to access the skills across the board that they're able to and need to to be able to grow um and that's been a problem for a reasonable amount of time under under yeah. labor and it looked like labor have been reluctantly if you like moving the goalposts on immigration settings but it, they haven't said bang we were wrong here's a, a raft of fix it policies it's like they have been just slowly slowly walking their position back to allow more people into into the country do you want to see some sort of definitive declaration and a real big policy change? Well, I think what what you're more likely to see, uh, and I guess the, the key thing is, you know, we're not up for, for sort of wholesale immigration. That's not really going to be the whole answer to to the labour market challenges that businesses are facing. You know, what, what we need is particular sets of skills. I mean, we're probably behind the eight ball in places like health with doctors and nurses, for example. We're probably going to have to, at some point as a country, say we want to incentivise these people to come to New Zealand because right now, you know, there's a global shortage of, of medical professionals and, you know, we're, we're still in a pandemic. So there are places, and, and they are needed to ensure that, you know, that people remain healthy so they can continue to work and enjoy life, basically. So... So the key thing is to be, I think, uh, re really like Labor had started to do with the Green List, be very, very clear about about not only who can come to the country, but why they should come to New Zealand. And, and we may have to provide incentives to some of those people, you know, technology professionals, IT professionals. I mean, I, I'm not sure. One of the biggest business challenges I, I, challenges I think in 2023, aside from inflation, falling demand, all of those things, increasing interest rates, I think is something we haven't talked too much about, but is cybercrime. Um, and, and, you know, that's been on the increase in terms of, uh, you know, really, really impacting businesses. Now, if we don't have enough IT professionals in the country, we're certainly not going to be able to protect ourselves properly. So, so there's some areas I think we'll need to provide incentives for people to come to New Zealand. All right. Um, in general terms, do you guys, does your organisation know Chris Hipkins? And what do you make of him? Yeah, we've had a, a, a lot to do with Chris and a, and a range of his portfolios, uh, previous portfolios, particularly because, the, you know, the, the other side of the skills um, uh, area is, of course, education. So as the Minister of Education uh, over most of, uh, you know, Labor's five and a half years in, in government, he has been the Minister for Education, including tertiary education. Um, what, do I, what have we made of him? Um, thoughtful, um, responsive, uh, will listen, I think, to, to business and, uh, and, you know, do what he can within, within the context of the Labour Party. You know, we're not always going to agree on things. Um, but I think, I think what you might see is, a, you know, and what you've probably already seen is a, is a willingness to engage in some areas, but perhaps which might have been off limits. And, um, and, you know, we'd be really, really keen to do that. All right. So, so you're hopeful, you're, you're optimistic about the future of the relationship between business or the businesses you represent and, and the new new prime ministership, the new administration? Well, you, you've got to give it a go, <laughs> would be my observation. Um, you know, businesses still have to operate um, whichever political party is in power, and, and that's 
part of the challenge, right? You've got to continue to engage. Our job is to continue to engage and try and get the best results for business. So the three things or four things that we've really said publicly is, you know, sort out immigration rapidly uh, and, you know, that might require, you know, some some pretty incisive uh, decision making around particular sectors. Uh, secondly, we say go a bit, go a bit easier on industrial relations. You know, businesses are steering down the barrel of fair pay agreements now. They are looking at the prospect of 2023, not really looking, understanding where their demand might come from. You might have seen that NZIR mm. report a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, lowest sort of Business. lowest um, in a year, and and the whole. The whole uh, life of that survey since 1961. So they're uncertain. So what we're saying is, hey, maybe don't increase the minimum wage by, you know, 10 percent or 8 percent, or you know, make it reasonable so that businesses can say, okay, we can we can deal with that. The third area is actually really look at um, regulatory policy and say, uh, if we're imposing costs on business, let's just stop that stuff. Uh, if we're looking at policy which is going to impose costs on business, let's stop that because it, it takes money out of the pockets of businesses, which then uh, flows on through to reduced employment, uh, and that affects uh, New Zealanders more broadly. So mm. to have a look at all those things. The, the fourth area that I'd say that we've been pretty poor as a country, at, and that would include any government, frankly, is mm. to look at what our investment settings are and say, hey, you know, we need more capital in this country. Uh, it'll come from a range of sources, domestic and international. We need to really look at those, those, the international, uh, international capital and the quality of it, and, and make sure we can make the most of it when it, mm. and it attract it to New Zealand, make the most of it. Quite That's some buzz, it. some hum about new taxes, or the idea of, or the proposition that there will be new taxes on capital and on business and on well, those who are supposedly aren't paying their way. In fact, they are proportionally paying more than anyone else. But it would seem that, that this realigned Labour Party might ask more uh, by way of tax from businesses and the better off. Your views on that? Uh, I think if, if they were going to go into an election with that, that would be, you know, that, that would be a pretty big call. I, I suspect what is more likely is that they will very much look, particularly for middle class voters, if you like, people who have been really, really squeezed, um, middle class and, uh, and low middle class voters, they'll look at some form of indexation for tax. Uh, so they'll not describe it as a tax cut, but that indexation issue is a, is a real issue. Uh, you know, it's, it's long been a problem. Uh, it will put money back into people's pockets quite quickly. Um, you know, one of the things with um, with not giving tax cuts, for example, or indexation, uh, is that you know the, the government continue to hold that tax. If if you're giving it, if you're providing indexation, they of course lose that money, so they lose the power over that money, and it's something uh, I would say Labor governments are pretty reluctant to do. However, um, you know they will need to do something. The cost of living payments you know, finish now, the uh, the fuel subsidies um, coming off, so and people are still being squeezed. So, and, and inflation is still uh, pretty high. Uh, and at the same time, mortgage rates are going up. So they will need to have a really hard think about that. I think that's probably the thing to look out for. All right. Um, look, just before we go, it is her, effectively her last day as Prime Minister today. She goes to Ratna, the Prime Minister, the uh, new Prime Minister sworn in tomorrow. Chris Hipkin sworn in tomorrow. Um, we'll deal with two things. Firstly, the much vaunted narrative that Jacinda Ardern was the victim of misogyny and nastiness and nasty people saying nasty things about her. Um, your views on that, Kirk, as someone who is very much inside the Beltway and sees much of what goes on? Yeah, look, uh, to be honest, I, I never had a discussion with her about anything like that. Um, and to be fair, I mean, I, I was found a, you know, a pretty, a, a pretty hardy individual to have a have a conversation with me. We had many discussions, many agreements, many disagreements. Right? Um, there's no doubt, as a prime minister uh, and as a cabinet, they had to make some really challenging and difficult decisions. Uh, uh, you know, in normal times, but also over COVID, um, and that would have alienated um, people. So, so I think um, in my observation is, as I, I'm not across, you know, what sort of social media responses she was getting or anything like that. But, but I would, I would, I think it's probably, you know, 
if you look at the last five years, uh, as a cabinet and as a prime minister, she would have had to make a, a hell of a lot more decisions, particularly because of the manual nature of the decision making process during COVID, than 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 perhaps other prime ministers who'd been through five years of tenure. Uh, and I guess that's that can that can stuff you, <laughs> frankly. Yeah, yeah. How much gas you got left in the in, in the tank, Kirk? Well, I'm currently still on holiday, but I but I like talking to you, Sean. So, um, <laughs> so uh, so I just keep I keep re- I'm, I'm refilling at the moment, to be honest. Um, uh, but but I I think it's a really important year for business, and I, I think myself and the team are really really uh, excited about uh, about the year. Um, obviously, there are a hell of a lot of challenges, um, but but we're, we we. We think that uh, we're in a pretty good place to try and address those on behalf of business and and really uh, up the advocacy uh, in a way that we uh, did, for example, over COVID as well. Yeah. Kirk, I thank you very much indeed for your time. Enjoy the rest of your holidays. That is uh, Kirk Hope, the Chief Executive of Business in New Zealand, uh, identifying the priorities, immigration, number one priority. Um, and as I say, uh, Labor have been walking back their poor immigration policies step by step by step. Maybe they just need to sit down and really come up with a plan on that. Uh, Industrial relations, he says, ease off on that. Ease off on that's the last thing we need as we head into a recession. Get rid of the red tape. Get rid of the red tape as well and look for some investment in the New Zealand economy. And what was his... He didn't say... He Cope didn't say that the Prime Minister was the subject of terrible misogyny. He's not losing his stuff. He's not losing his stuff. Maybe all all the columnists that have been writing that, maybe they were just all menstruating at the same time. And that's what caused it.